so first of all I'm just gonna insert one light and let's call this the key light and uh, what I'm gonna do is to give it a position of minus 500 on X uh, maybe 600 on Y and minus 500 on Z and if I go into the four different views and just uh, zoom out on the top view here um, you can see that the light is kinda on a 45 degree angle to our object and uh, if we go into the front view you can see that it's coming from above here and uh, the right view you can see that the light is coming from the front of the robot and uh, this is called a key light for one reason uh, because it's, it's the main light which is doing uh, most of the illumination and we'll be doing most of the illumination in our project and um, yeah you want to position this at a high angle uh, so that it's sort of shining down onto your uh, object and uh, the reason why it's in this position is uh, simply that you know natural light in uh, you know in the real world you know it tends to be uh, from a high source the most obvious one being uh, the Sun even if when you're indoors most of the lights tend to be above you at some level you know you get the odd few which are on the floor but uh, you know we're not talking about odds here we're talking about the majority of lights so uh, this is why this light is up here so what I'm gonna do is to copy that light and I will um, call this the fill light and I'm just gonna change the X position to be the exact opposite so here it's minus 500 I'll make this 500 and now it's on the other side so now what I have is two lights which have got the same amount of strength or intensity and uh, I have this same lighting on both sides and uh, you don't want this what you wanna do is to um, dim the fill light so I'm gonna turn this down to maybe just 30 percent and uh, the reason why we have the fill light is that uh, you know if we turn it off you can see that we have the main light coming from this direction and uh, we have this really sort of hard edge uh, which separates the light and the dark side of our object so if we have a fill light that dark edge becomes a little bit softer and just looks a little bit nicer and uh, what I'm gonna do is to highlight both my lights and uh, on the shadows here I'm gonna have shadow uh, retraced hard and um, kinda like a general rule about lighting is that uh, the further a light is the harder is shadow and uh, since uh, these two lights here will be the furthest away from our robots uh, I'm not gonna insert another light which is outside of this range then uh, we're gonna put the hardest shadows on this um, yeah you may have noticed that I had global illumination turned on I you don't want that turn that off and um, now I have this and uh, by the way this is the material from the floor right here it's just a gray color with all the other channels turned off so you know it looks nice and I don't have specular annoying me on the ground here okay so now I have this and uh, right now it actually looks okay -ish. it doesn't look too bad um, but we have to insert a third light which you, which we're gonna call the backlight and uh, you know it goes exactly where it says it goes to the back of our model or object so I'm gonna put it on maybe 300 on the X position maybe 400 on Y and then on the Z position which is back and forth I will make this uh, maybe 800 so that it's uh, really quite far back and I'm gonna increase the intensity to about 200 so double what the default is and um, when I do that you will now see this really hard edge on our robot and uh, the reason why we have a backlight is to uh, you know light up the background and also to uh, create a contrast between our object and the background and uh, create this kind of silhouette effect 
and uh, this just uh, gives our robots uh, or objects just more attention and uh, just uh, brings more life to our scene so if I just uh, zoom in a little here and turn this off just uh, in the you know in the preview render here you can actually see that it makes quite a big difference and uh, this hard edge really adds a lot to our scene so um, let me just render this out and uh, now we have this and uh, by the way what I'll do at the end of this tutorial is uh, to render each uh, light on a separate frame and then each time just add one more light just to see what the different lights do uh, in a much better way so um, that's uh, the backlight done I'm also gonna get another light now which is called a bounce light but before I put this in I will just show you what it's for so we have a light coming from above uh, and another one up here and uh, one at the back but we actually don't have anything at all coming from the front so what we end up having is um, areas like the legs here which are quite dark and uh, you know even the backlight is not really doing much to this leg right here or the other leg for that matter so this is where the bounce light comes in just to fill in um, uh, sort of the lower areas of our object so if I uh, get that light I can uh, bring it to maybe minus 300 on the z-axis which is just in front of our object here and uh, what you want to do is to put this below your object and uh, as you can move it you can see that it's uh, having a different effect on our object um, make sure this is uh, underneath the floor here I might move it a little bit forward and um, yeah you also want to decrease the intensity uh, you don't want it to be too overwhelming so maybe if I go for another 30 percent and uh, if we just uh, turn that on and off you can just see uh, again uh, the edges become a little bit softer and we can just see a bit more detail uh, it's kind of the same thing that the fill light did but uh, remember these are two different types of lights so let's call this bounce so we now have four lights um, we have one light remaining uh, one we have to we still gotta add in and uh, this is called the overall light and uh, a really easy way to do this is to just get an area light this time I'm gonna zoom out a lot here and I'm just gonna make this really big square I'm uh, resizing this by holding shift and just dragging out and um, I'm on uh, I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees or just change the pitch value to 90 and uh, I've actually put this upside down uh, all lights in cinema 4d aside from the omni light which is this here you know the four lights we inserted to start off with uh, the rest of them they shine towards the z-axis so I need to flip this so if I go off to minus 90 we now have the z-axis pointing down which is blue by the way and uh, now we have our overall lighting which does exactly um, what its name suggests it um, basically gives you overall lighting to your whole scene and uh, again you don't want this to be the same intensity as your main light for example so you might wanna dim that maybe if I go for something like 50 and uh, we just have lighting from the top and um, you know it looks pretty awesome so I'm gonna render this and uh, now we have this going on so this may not show much uh, but uh, if we click on all the lights I'm just gonna go to shadow shadow map soft but I'm gonna go back to my key light and change this to retraced hard and also the same for the fill light um, the backlight I think I might actually go for another retraced hard but um, the overall lighting here because it's so uh, close and covers such a big area and such a big light uh, it's gonna do some soft shadows so we're gonna leave it at that and uh, when I render this now it looks like this so looks quite nice but I think that my floor here is uh, a little bit too light but um, yeah this is looking pretty nice um, 
I'm now going to show you a few other ways to make this even more realistic. So we're going to start off with the key light. We're going to put a tint on this. I'm going to go for an orange tint, uh, which, guess what, comes from the sun. So, you know, having tints in your lights just uh, gets you away from that preset look, you know, just the preset white. And, uh, you know, in the, in the real world, it's very rare you get white natural light. So having a little bit of a tint helps to add more realism. And uh, also on the fill light, I'm going to have a blue tint instead something like this and uh, you know it's a very subtle change but uh, I believe it makes a big difference and um, on our backlight here we can uh, go crazy let's go for maybe some kind of red color but uh, move it towards more the orangey so it's not too red and um, it's gonna have a big effect on our whole scene but you can see that it creates a very nice edge and um, looks really nice um, the overall lighting uh, we can also tint this a little bit I think I'm gonna go for an orange and uh, you wanna try use sort of the warm and cold colors uh, any other colors outside of orange and blue really I would not recommend if you're going for realistic lighting especially if we're talking about uh, just natural realistic lighting uh, okay so this is looking pretty nice um, there's just one other problem that we have here. Uh, since I used all pretty much Omni lights except for our area light at the top here, they are emitting from these points and they pretty much go on forever in all the directions. And the strength stays the same no matter how far the object is. And that's not very realistic, you know. Lights lose their intensity over distance. So what we need to do is to create some fall off. So if I just uh, highlight all the lights here, I'm gonna leave the overall light as it is. Um, I can go to details and the fall off, I will make this inverse square clamped. And now I have these uh, spherical sort of, I don't know, areas. And this is basically where the light is reaching. And I can go to the individual lights and adjust this um, fall off position. So if I go to the key light, I can uh, adjust it so that it uh, gets to the robot around about here. It looks nice. And uh, we can go for the fill light and uh, pretty much just do the same thing. Um, the backlight is now is, is nowhere near our robot so we can push this to about here. Um, let's see what else uh, the bounce light we want to make this so that it's pretty much just uh, illuminates the front which is another reason why we add fall off this is to avoid spill because uh, as you can see here the backlight is now pretty much only going up to round about here which is actually too much so if I get the backlight I can uh, push it back here and uh, this is because I don't want it to spill into the area which is being illuminated by this other light. Now this is really difficult to do in uh, like for example real world photography but you know we have the tools in Cinema 4D to actually adjust exactly where we want these lights to illuminate up to and uh, basically that just uh, gives you some really nice results. This is way too big here and uh, yeah, it's looking pretty cool. You're going to get a bunch of lines going through your scene, but uh, hey, it doesn't look too bad. Um, okay, so I'm going to get a camera here, and I will uh, zero out the heading. Actually, I need to look through this first of all. And I will zero out the pitch, zero out the X coordinate. And on the Y, I'm going to go for 180, but then on the pitch, I'll go for minus 5. And actually, we need to go a bit further, so maybe 250, too high, zoom out maybe. Mm, 230 looks about right, which is just like in the center. And um, I think this looks okay. And uh, yeah, now we have this really nice lighting. And uh, you know, you can clearly tell what the main subject of this scene is. It's the robot, and it's lit. Uh, 
in a very nice and uh, you know thoughtful way I didn't just place these lights in random places and then turn on global illumination uh, I'm not saying don't use global illumination by the way it's a very powerful tool and um, it can help you achieve even greater results but uh, only when it's used properly you know you still have to do all of this positioning and so on and as you can see here there wasn't really much difference because my lighting was already pretty decent and uh, global illumination just made it slightly better so that's what you're trying um, to achieve really make uh, make the most of these 3d lights take advantage of them and use them properly and uh, the results can be quite amazing Thank <laughs> you.